be able to flow at this speed, and if the cars can't flow, then there's going to be like gloom and doom, and we're back to like war on cars. And the DCs, um, and it's slow, and they still have some work to do, but I think DC's traffic operations guys, they've, they've begin, begun to look at different ways to look at the metric of, again, maybe it's okay that cars are delayed a little bit if we can get more people moving through the intersection. One example, I have a project where um, it's one of the most dangerous intersections in the city, and part of it is it's a metro station entrance, a metro station entrance, a Target and a Chick-fil-A, right? <laughs> so if you can imagine, it's just people, and it's a very dense area. So it's just, it's just constantly people. And then there's a farmer's market and a plaza. So it's a, very, it's a lot of people moving all times of the day. And so we propose a pedestrian scramble where everybody stops but the pedestrians, let them just move, get them, get them through the intersection, and then stop them and allow the cars to move. And so if you look at the traditional model, and we say level of service, then the intersection is gonna fail. Like that is how that metric is gonna work, the intersection fails. But if you look at the amount of people that we can actually move, and if we actually give the pedestrians time to move, and then move the cars, we can actually get the cars to the intersection. Because part of the challenge is the buses were just getting stuck, because no one can make the right turns, there's just too many pedestrians. Um, it's the same thing that you'll see in downtown in 7th and H, where it's a pedestrian, there's a pedestrian scramble. So during, at that place, the cars are not allowed to make a turn because you have the Verizon Center. So cars can only go straight in each direction. Um, and then there's a point where it's 60 seconds and peds can move however they want to move. They just got to get across, they just got to get through the intersection. It's been wildly successful, particularly with moving a lot of people at one time. So that's the main reason it's, um, a lot of the traffic operations have, just, have said the intersection may fail from a metric, but we can move more people through if we do this. The other thing to your second point when it comes to left turning vehicles, um, we've added a lot of pedestrian lead lights um, in the district. So that means pedestrians get three seconds um, before then the cars get released to make do whatever they're going to do. Um, and it's a law that bikes can move with the pedestrian light. So if I am stopped at this red light and the, the pedestrians get a light to go, I can move in the direction that the pedestrians are moving as a person on a bike. Um, so all those things have, have helped um, with the left hooks, if you will. Um, also when there's a lot of issues, uh, DC's added just left turn on the lights and it just stop the peds, let people make the left, particularly if it's a very high left turning area. Um, we also have it where you just have to make a right and go around the block. Okay. Is that um, allowing the bikes to move with the pedestrians? Is that a DC specific law? It is a law, yeah, it's a law within the District of Columbia. Everyone else may have it too, but yeah. Yeah, it is legal to move when the pedestrians have a loop light. And so it gives you, as a you know, person on the bike, at least three second heads, enough to like, you know, get going. It takes a while sometimes to get those pedals moving, but at least gives you enough time to get mostly through the intersection. And it's particularly helpful when. Um, there's like one particular area where you go from a bike lane to having a share lane, so it's nice to be able to kind of get the jump to get in the front. Um, same reason why we have bike boxes. Um, so there's a couple areas where we have one really intersection. It's really, it's really, I hate it. So we have on the L Street cycle tracks, they're on the left side of the street. And um, so therefore, if you want to make a right turn, you have to actually, you can use the bike box to make the right turn. So we've done things like that with the bike boxes, which allow you to kind of move in front of the cars when the light's red. But if the light's green, then good luck. That's why I don't like it. Yeah, you were talking about narrowing up lanes to slow down traffic. Do you have a three foot rule and all that? Mm -hmm. We do. protected bike lanes um, and even now areas where there are bike lanes uh, the city's going back and retrofitting them such that they're moving them closer to the curb so they're protected by the parked cars
I got a little bit better with outreach, but it's it's still kind of struggling. You know, a lot of times people are like, I, I got a bike here. Let me hold your bike, you know, and that's it. So, <laughs> um, I think part of the challenge is, I'm a, I know you guys are thinking about bike share. Um, I'm a believer that you can't retrofit equity. It makes it a challenge, right? It's just like we're trying to retrofit our streets to be ADA compliant, whereas if you just did it that way in the first place, it'd be a lot easier. Um, and Philly's program has had a lot of success in terms of getting different people to use it, but it's because they were intentional about it before they even purchased the bike, you know, down to the bike color. They engaged all people. They worked with Temple University to do a lot of focus groups. Um, and they were one of the first to implement a cash system using 7-Elevens or, you know, whatever the, the prevailing store is where people could go buy their membership for the day and get their code. They're one of the first. Um, they also um, hired people from the community prior to the stations arriving to be bike ambassadors. And they have these really fly shirts. Like, if you ever get a chance to look at the Indigo t-shirts, they are so awesome. I saw them in, I spoke in Philly last year. Their t-shirts are so hot. Like it is like, it wraps like around everything. And it's like neon colors. And their bike ambassadors are really proud of the program. They're really proud of their neighborhoods. And that's that to me makes all the difference. And DC is still struggling. I mean, if you look at a bike share out of DC, it's it's what I call United Colors of Benetton University. So it's like white woman, Latina, Asian woman, and we're happy eating our salad, right? And I don't feel like it's real. It's not, I mean, they are real people, but if there were stage photos, whereas, you know, it, and then they're all wearing business attire. So it signals something to people that see it, like, okay, this is, you clearly need to have money. You clearly need to have a job where you wear a suit in order to engage in this, versus having bigger sized people and having older people and younger people and people in work clothing and, and people in clothing of the cook, you know, just different just different types of people on the system. I mean, even for black women bite, you know, one of the things that we stopped using were photos of me, right? Like photos of me are just not very convincing. Because people will say, oh, well, of course you can bite, right? But we have a lot of women who are older than me. Um, we have uh, one woman who's probably one of our most consistent members and ride leaders now. Um, we got her on a bike and she's now a ride marshal. She's um, she's a woman of a certain age. She's, she's definitely over, she's past retirement age, you know? Um, and so she's a great represent, representative, and we have women who are, you know, fuller figure, and all of those things, like how people see, okay, if I, I, can see, I see someone that looks like me and I know I can do it. And I think that's just the, big, the biggest struggle of DC's bike trip program. We have time for one more question, because then the, we have to clear it out of the room. I have a quick one, Matt. What is a big step? Oh my God, it's the most. Oh, it's not a good question. No, no, no. It's it's a so basically. Um, what was the question? What was the question? What's a mixing, mixing zone? zone? So oh, mixing Veronica zone. mentioned like bike boxes and then mixing zones. <laughs> the nerdy engineering question should yeah. be saved for the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll show you. So this is so this is the street, right? So that's a street. So you have the protected bike lane. Right? And then you have travel lanes for cars. Travel for cars. This is my little car. Hey. Okay. This is the bike. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So the bike. Okay. Something like that. So the bike goes. So this car wants to make a left turn. Right? So how does this person make a left turn? Because so I'm a bike on the left side, and this car is in the left lane. They want to make a left turn. There's got to be a mixing zone. So what happens is, like when it gets to this is the intersection. Um, so there's a period where the cars can cross over. They go like this, and then this narrows. So the bikes go this way, and then the cars go this way. So there's an area, <laughs> and that's the mixing zone. And then they make this, this is the left turn. So that's an example of a mixing zone. So I don't like it because no. inevitably, this person's like, Whoa. And then 
So the thing about DC streets, like our numbers go from high to low or low to high, right? It's not that difficult. So what happens is people go, oh, this is 17th Street. Oh, this is 16th Street. Oh, this is where I'm supposed to turn. So what happens is that people make a left turn from this lane. So that's the other part. So of course, if, when you're in this lane as a cyclist, you have to pay attention. Because inevitably, particularly if they have Maryland tags. <laughs> you see Maryland, if you're ever biking in DC and you say Maryland tags, just stop. Like you're not gonna win. <laughs> so then what happens is if this car, this car here, makes the left right on you. And it's happened to me before. But I, I know what's gonna happen, so I just anticipate it. So that's the problem with having the, the protected bike lane on the left side. It's only on, it's only like this on one of our streets. But it's 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 really bad. Well, thank you so much.